Now that the president's impeachment trial is over, the focus in Washington has shifted to the 2020 presidential campaign. And as the Texas Tribune's Alana Rocha tells our Sally Hernandez, the effects of that shift are being felt in Texas. Thanks for joining us, Alana. Thanks for having me. Of course. Okay, so we're talking about Iowa and how the results have finally started to trickle in, you know, a few days later. Um, when we talk about Super Tuesday here in Texas, which is in March, how do we know what happened in Iowa is not going to happen here? Well, we really didn't until uh, late last night when the Secretary of State's office kind of squashed our report that Texas Democrats uh, said that election officials told them, you know, you'll have county uh, vote totals, and yeah. so we'll know who the statewide winner is. But the way the Democratic Party um, doles out its delegates is kind of through a complex formula. Mm -hmm. 228 delegates at stake, a lot. But at issue here are 149 that are kind of awarded based on the proportion of vote a, a candidate gets in a Senate district, and it's kind of... Complicated. Yeah, yeah. eyes crossed talking about it. But, um, yeah, they said initially, you know, we'll have all the county data, supposedly according to the party, but not the precinct level and Senate district data. You know, and then late last night after our report was out, Senate, uh, or Secretary of State's office, which oversees elections here in the state, mm -hmm. said any reports to that uh, effect are categorically false. We'll have all the results on Super Tuesday. Okay, so then we'll hold him accountable to that. Exactly. Right? Waking right. up and knowing exactly what happened before you went to bed. I heard Mike Bloomberg speak. He's been in this fight for so long. You know, I've seen a lot of ads for Bloomberg in Texas. That has to be on purpose. Oh, for sure. I mean, he has kind of limitless, uh, seemingly limitless uh, resources, and he's investing heavily here in the state. Mm -hmm. As we've talked about, he's uh, you know, kind of bypassing the early voting states that everybody focuses on, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, um, and looking at the Super Tuesday prize. Here in Texas, Democrats will award more delegates than the early states combined. Right. So he sees it as a big prize. He's opening as many as 11 uh, field offices this weekend alone. Wow. He's continuing to hire, has north of 100 uh, paid staffers here in the state. Um, so yeah, he's, he's just banking on uh, picking up a load of delegates uh, out of Super Tuesday. Cornyn and um, Senator Cruz yes. both saying that they were acquitting the president, and they voted to do so right. um, yesterday. <clears throat> Mitt Romney, was that a bit of surprising news to you? You know, um, somewhat. I mean, we know that he hasn't been a fan of Trump's. Yeah. I was hearing a report this morning about how that's playing out in Utah. Trump is not a huge, uh, hugely popular there mm -hmm. compared to, say, here in Texas. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was unfavorable, sure, but, you know, he kind of stuck to his guns, if you will, right. it seems. so. Well, Cornyn knows the hold that President Trump has here in Texas. Right. And so how is that going to play into his own reelection? Well, um, along partisan lines, yeah. right? Uh, the Democrats are unified around their dislike of Trump, and so the fact that the incumbent voted to acquit him only fuels their fires more. Um, but on the Republican side, uh, the president enjoys 26 points more of popularity than Cornyn. Right. So Cornyn really had little choice than to uh, acquit the president. All right, Alana, thank you. Thank you.